Hi, I'm Kristin. I'm Head of Product at iFlix. So iFlix is a entertainment service. We are available in emerging markets and we are across maybe 30 countries around the globe. What we do is we offer a variety of TV shows, movies, live content like premium sports and news. We also offer a lot of hyper-local originals and productions made specifically for the countries that we're going into. I work in the product team and along with the rest of the guys in my team, we are responsible for the product strategy and every feature and new service that we roll out to our users. I studied electronics engineering in MMU and my major was in telecommunications. Even though I have not worked as an engineer, I've worked very closely with engineers. And I think that having that background in engineering has definitely helped me because it allows me to kind of speak both languages so I can link the non-technical with the technical. I can bridge business users with engineers and I can bridge user requirements to our product technological capabilities. So I never really thought of myself as a female leader in this space, but iFlix gave me this opportunity to grow uh, into this role and I am very aware that even though there are many tech female leaders out there and there has been an increase, but we are still an obvious minority. So I think that's the biggest challenge. And I think we need more women mentors in this space because it's important that the younger group have people they can look up to, who they admire, um, who can motivate them. Well, millennials, they know what they want and they go for it. And I think I can learn a lot from them. So the only thing I can say is be passionate about what you do, no matter what it is, and really love it. Um, for women out there, I think if you're interested in the tech industry, then just be confident, go for it, even though you're a minority. Don't let that hinder you because there's an opportunity for you to stand out. My name is Juan Hazmer. I am one of the founders. Uh, I'm the CEO and also the game director of Metronomic. I used to work in Japan for seven years in Square Enix and I was one of the lead game designers for Final Fantasy XV. I formed Metronomic with my cousin. We had this idea of, you know, just making, wanting to change how games are perceived. So I wanted to have games that have rhythm. It has the fun of a music game but not targeted towards music gamers. I think game design is a very, very unique um, field because it deals with everything, actually. Because nowadays games, they're not just, you know, a bunch of pixels on the monitor and, you know, you just have to imagine what the pixels are. When I was one of the lead game designers for Final Fantasy XV, I had to build cities and think what would be fun to have in the cities. It just spans across many fields, which is why every game design is a challenge. And that's why I like it. Yeah. I bought all these expensive game design books. When I read those books, I just noticed that um, a lot of these books were covering Western philosophies of game design rather than a Japanese one. The Japanese game industry is like a black box. You can't see what's happening inside that. So I was that curious to the point that I just saved some money and just flew straight to Japan. I know that the language barrier was there, so I had to study Japanese full time for one and a half years. During that one and a half years, I told myself that I should create a 10-page game design proposal in Japanese. While learning Japanese, I slowly wrote that and then I just sent the game design proposal all over the place to other companies and then and that's how I got to Square Enix. The game industry in Malaysia is booming. There's a lot of um, support going on right now, like for example by MDEC. So MDEC is supporting the game industry, so anyone who just wants to make a game, they can make it with the support of MDEC. And that's fantastic. A common pattern in Malaysia that I see uh, when I ask my friends and also my friends' parents, they think that the game industry is not making money. I've read a report that for the past year, the games industry, uh, total software and hardware, has generated revenue of over 195 billion US dollars. That is way bigger than the Hollywood movie industry, by the way. So if you are planning to send your kids to the games industry, then be prepared because your kids are going to take a big role in how the world is going to progress in the entertainment industry. Hi, I'm Gan. Um, I'm from FusionX. I'm actually a director of Big Data Analytics in FusionX. FusionX is an established multi-award winning data technology provider. We actually specialize in analytics, um, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Our focus is to help our clients 
to manage, to make sense of data, to derive uh, useful insights and information uh, from all these um, structured, unstructured, semi-structured data. It's going to be big data as well. And hope by generating these insights, it helps the customers to be able to do more data-driven decisions and instead of just um, taking from their, just uh, plugging from the A of the decision. It was actually my core patient since my young days. I like computers, I, I like to solve problems from a more uh, structured and programmable way. And that's where I chosen my career and my um, education to be very much focused in information technology. And that's where I went into MMU and graduated and now I was in, still in this line. MMU gave us a lot of opportunities, a lot of mediums for us to participate in industry initiatives. So they organized a lot of workshops with players like Microsoft, IBM and a lot of big industry players. We get to expose to newer technology. Um, so that is actually equipping us uh, with more readily skill set. And when we actually graduate from MMU, um, Fortunate is actually giving us a lot of advantage uh, for us to gain more good jobs and good employment opportunities. I think it's a very great um, program initiated by MDAC. The program actually really helped in connecting both industry players and the universities together to actually really help the communities, really help the technology graduates themselves to be able to catch up with the latest trend and expose them before they graduate, to expose them with the right industry experience for it. So with this technology and, and when actually they graduate, it actually helped to um, accelerate the entire adoption and getting the students to be more um, up to speed um, and more comfort and more ready for the market challenges that we always face in the industry. And it's very important for the industry to collaborate because um, the program can only be successful with both parties um, collaborate together. And I think that if the industry has a lot of challenges to identifying talent, this program is the right medium for the industry to contribute and generate more talent in the market itself.